Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and today I have a quick explanation video um, and I want to talk to you about this unbiased expectation theory. What expectation theory really attempts to do is to predict what short-term interest rates will be in the future based on current long-term interest rates. And what the theory suggests is that if we have two investors, one who invests in two consecutive one-year bonds and one who invests in a single two-year bond, their return on that investment will be equal. So in other words, according to this theory, investors have two choices. They can purchase a current bond and if they hold it to maturity, they can earn the current or spot yield every year until maturity. Or they can purchase a series of one-year bonds. The thing here is the only rate that's known is the current yield or the spot yield, but they can expect or predict to know what the unknown yields will be in the future. So this works in theory. So theoretically the return for both investment decisions will be the same or should be the same but this only holds when the market is at equilibrium. So what happens if the equilibrium doesn't hold? So let's look at investor A. So investor A purchased a four-year bond at the current spot rate. After she buys the long-term bond, the rate on one-year bonds rises. And that's okay, because what she will do is she will sell or short her four-year bond. She's then going to use the proceeds from the sale of that four-year bond to buy one-year bonds over the coming four-year period. So she'll buy one bond, one one-year bond in each of the coming four years and what that will do is guarantee her a profit over this four-year investment horizon. The question becomes how do you make that decision? most investors in bonds will look at the yield curve. What the yield curve does is it looks at the yield on the bond versus the years of maturity. So in what we call a normal or rising yield curve, as the maturity um, gets longer, the yield will rise. If the yield curve is flat, then we know the yield remains fixed um, regardless of the number of years to maturity our bond has. And in an inverted yield curve, the longer the term of the bond, the lower the yield. So our investor looked at the yield curve, saw that it was normal or rising, made the decision to get out of the long-term bond and into the short-term one-year bonds in order to increase her overall return on investment. But let's face it, nothing's perfect. So one of the problems using this expectation theory is we see it sometime overestimate future short-term rates. And it really then makes it easy for investors to end up with an inaccurate prediction of what that bond yield curve is going to look like. Another limitation of the theory, remember we said that was as long as equilibrium held. The problem is there are many factors that impact the short and long-term bond yields. Um, one example of this is if the Federal Reserve adjusts interest rates up or down. And what we know is this has a pretty significant impact on bond yields, particularly short-term bonds. However, the long-term yield, those long-term bonds, may not be as impacted because so many other factors impact long-term yields, and that's things such as inflation and the expectations for economic growth. So when we summarize the limitation of this theory, the limitation is the theory really doesn't take into account all of the outside forces and fundamental macroeconomic factors that drive interest rates and those interest rates ultimately 
drive bond yields. And to be honest with you, this is why we call it a theory. I hope this helped, um, and I'll have another video on calculating um, bond yields. Um, but for now, I hope this gives you a better idea of expectations theory.